Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. So in this video, let us discuss about haptans and adjuvants. So firstly, let us discuss about haptans and later let us discuss about this adjuvants. So now coming to the haptans, the term haptans was introduced by Karl Lenz-Tenner in 20th century. So what is meant by this haptans? Firstly, let us see the definition. Haptans are small molecules which contains low molecular weight. See here, this haptans, you can consider this haptans as an antigens, foreign antigens, okay? So these antigens are very minute, they are small in size and their molecular weight will also be very much low. So one of the most important property which you have to learn about this haptan is that haptans are antigenic. Remember this point, haptans are antigenic but they are not immunogenic. So what is meant by this antigenic and immunogenic properties, let us see later. Because firstly let us learn about the basic thing about this uh, property of this haptans, okay. So let us see here in the normal case what I wanted to say is that let us say these are the foreign antigens which are present in the external environment. Okay. So now once these foreign antigens will enter into your body then what happens immediately the antibodies will be produced against to this antigens which has been entered from the external environment. So now these foreign antigens will move towards the immune cells. Okay. And now what does this immune cells will do? It will produce antibodies on its surface. Okay. Once it recognizes this foreign antigens are coming towards it, then immediately the antibodies will be produced uh, on the surface of this immune cell against to this foreign antigens. So now what happens? Now these foreign antigens will start interacting to these antibodies which are present on this immune cell. Then what happens? Again the def defense mechanism occurs such that uh, the total mechanism which we all of us know. So uh, this is the one of the most important thing which you have to remember is that the foreign antigens will move towards the immune cell such that the immune cell will recognize as this antigens and starts producing these antibodies. And once these antibodies are produced then this foreign antigens will get binded over to these antibodies and starts defense mechanism. So this is the thing which happens in a normal case. I wanted to say is that this is the normal thing which happens. Okay, so now what happens in the case of this haptans? See here, if the antigens are in the form of haptans, then what happens is that, so let us see these are the haptans which are present in the external environment and once it enter into the body, what I wanted to say is that haptans, okay, once the haptans will enter into the body, then immediately our immune cell will recognize as this haptans, but but this immune cell will not produce any type of antibodies on its surface. But I have explained you here is that the normal case the antibodies will be produced on its surface of the immune cell. But here in this immune cell the antibodies will not be produced. That's what I have mentioned here. No antibody production. Why? Because there is a presence of the haptans in this case. But in this case there is a presence of any type of foreign antigens. But not haptans. Okay. So. Now you got a basic idea of what are maybe this haptans. So that's what I have mentioned here. Haptans are antigenic. What is meant by this antigenic property? Antigenic property is nothing but this haptans will move towards the immune cell uh, for the defense mechanism. But here I have also mentioned that these haptans are not immunogenic in such a way that this immune cell will not produce any type of antibodies against to this haptans. Right? So this is the most important property which you have to remember about this haptans. So what are the some of the best examples of this haptans? Dinitrophenol amino benzene, ortho amino benzoic acid, meta amino benzoic acid, para amino benzoic acid, penicillin. So all of these are the best examples of this haptans. Okay. When the haptans are combined or bonded with carrier protein, then haptan carrier component or haptan carrier complex molecule will get activated and then it becomes immunogenic. So I have said you what I have said you in the previous paper see here what I have said you normally this haptans uh, will not get recognized by this immunocell in such a way that it will not produce any type of antibodies right. So there is a choice for this haptans in such a way that it will get recognized by this immune cells. So now what you have to do for this haptans to get recognized by this immune cell. Let us see. That's what I have mentioned here. When the haptans are combined or bonded with carrier protein. So here these are the haptans. And normally what you have to know is that haptans are not immunogenic. Right? That's what I have mentioned here. They are not immunogenic. They are antigenic. So these haptans are not immunogenic. So to make it immunogenic, to make it immunogenic, what you are going to do? See here. These haptans will be combined with the carrier protein. To get immunogenic nature, this haptans will get combined with the carrier protein. That's what I have written here. When the haptans are combined or bonded with the carrier protein, then it forms haptan carrier complex. So this is the haptan carrier complex, right? 
so these are the haptans this red color one which i have drawn is known as haptans and this green color one indicates the carrier protein so this haptans will get combined with the carrier protein and forms hapten carrier protein complex right and now this complex will become immunogenic right this complex will become immunogenic in such a way that this haptans will act as an immunogenic property but normal haptans without combination without combination of this carrier protein it acts as not immunogenic it acts as non immunogenic but if this haptans are combined with the carrier protein then it forms hapten carrier protein complex in such a way that this haptans will become immunogenic right now you have got to know what is meant by the what is the basic thing of this haptans so normally if you take normal haptans without combination of this carrier protein and normal haptans will be introduced into organism and here the organism which we are going to take is a rabbit for example okay so normal haptans without carrier protein will be injected into the rabbit so the immune cells of this rabbit will not produce any antibodies right and now we are going to take only carrier protein without haptans and now we are going to inject that only carrier protein again to this rabbit then what happens antibodies will be produced but they will produce against to the carrier protein but not to the haptans why because we are not going to add haptans here right we are going to add only carrier protein right and now in the third case you are going to add carrier protein as well as the haptans in such a way that haptan plus carrier protein complex you are going to take this complex and you are going to inject into the organism that's nothing but the rabbit then what happens antibodies will be produced against to the haptans because we have introduced here haptans right so this is a one of the basic important thing which you have to remember about this haptans so now let us learn about the adjuvants so now coming to this adjuvants adjuvants are the substances which increases the immune power of the antigens immune power is nothing but the immunogenicity so what is meant by this immunogenicity or as what is meant by this immune power the capacity of the antigen to get binded to the antibody is called as immune power right so normally based on this immune power this antigens will be classified into two types low immunogenicity antigens and high immunogenicity antigens so the antigens whose immune power is very low are called as low immunogenicity antigens and the antigens whose immune power is high are called as high immunogenicity antigens so what i wanted to say is that now you are going to take for example now you are going to take low immunogenicity antigens that's something but where the antigens immune power is very much low so that type of antigens you are going to choose and now those type of antigens will be introduced into the organism let's say a rat or as a rabbit any type of organism then what happens antibody production doesn't occur why the antibody production doesn't occur in this organism because the antigens which have introduced into this organism is very low power where the immune power is very much low but now we are going to take high immune power of antigens and you are going to introduce it into the organism but the antibody production occurs why because the antigen immune power is high so the antibody production will also be done but here in this case the anti anti antibody production doesn't occur so now what you are going to do in this case for this low antigens to produce antibodies against to do it you are going to add this adjuvants see here the antigens whose immune power are very low you are going to add with adjuvants and once you are going to combine with adjuvants then immediately these adjuvants will activate these antigens and once these are introduced into the organism then the antibodies will be produced in this organism against to do this antigens so what you are going to do in this case as i have said you that if the antigens power is very much low the antibody production doesn't occur in the organism so in that case what you are going to do you are going to data take that low power antigens and now you are going to add that antigens with the adjuvants and now if you introduce this antigens into the organism then that particular organism will produce the antibodies and once that antibodies are produced then the defense mechanism occurs defense mechanism is nothing but where the antigens will get combined with that particular antibodies which are produced by the organism and then the defense mechanism occurs right so now what type of adjuvants will be added to that particular type of antigens let us see now the best the best examples of the adjuvants aluminum hydroxide gel aluminum phosphate calcium phosphate aluminum potassium sulfate this is also called as alum right so these are the about the adjuvants so hope you would understand about this haptans and adjuvants thank you for watching this video if you like this video just do like and subscribe and notes for this topic will be given in the whatsapp group and the invite will be given of the whatsapp group will be given in the description box so by using that link you can join us through the whatsapp group and and the notes will be given there so don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you